Um, as Abby said, my name is Chris Crookshanks, and I'm a fisheries biologist for the Nevada Department of Wildlife. <clears throat> uh, I'm currently uh, our state lead for all native aquatic species for the state of Nevada, um, based out of our headquarters in Reno. And tonight we're going to talk about uh, Nevada's native fish slam program. This is the first time I've given this, this presentation a few times in the past to various groups, Trout Unlimited, whatnot, um, and some conferences, but this is the first time I've done this presentation virtually. Um, I usually like to work uh, and have it very interactive. Um, I know that's gonna be hard to do as we go along, so why don't we just wait till the end? Uh, I have all night long, so I'm willing to uh, stay as long as needed for uh, whatever questions uh, or comments that anybody might have uh, when we're done. So. With that, we'll go ahead and get started on the Nevada Native Slam program. First off, what is uh, the Nevada Native Slam program? It was established uh, fairly recently in March 2012, and it's basically a just a recognition program designed to encourage fishing for Nevada's native trout species um, in a way to recognize uh, those people that catch all native trout species that are that are native in Nevada. Um, anybody and everybody is willing, is eligible to participate uh, in the Native SLAM program. So uh, the Native SLAM program, what species are native to Nevada? Um, here's one right here, and we're going to go through all of them here um, fairly quickly. Um, these are, uh, this is a map here of the Western United States. Um, overlaid on the map are all the uh, native trout species to the western United States. So you can see most of Nevada uh, at one time about 10,000 years ago was covered by Lake Lahontan. Um, it's native range for Lahontan cutthroat trout. And you can see Bonneville cutthroat trout in Utah and uh, Colorado River cutthroat trout in, in a lot, lot of uh, Utah and Colorado and Yellowstone up in Wyoming and Montana and West Slope on up north. So this gives you just a quick um, visual of the native, all the native uh, trout species to the Western United States. Um, how do I participate in the native fish slam? There's a bunch of different ways. Um, we have an official entry form uh, and it can be found in our, um, each year we publish this in our, in our fishing regulation booklet. Um, it can also be downloaded online. Um, and there's a form um, here with a name, your sportsman's ID, mailing address. Um, and each time you catch one of these native species, uh, you take a photo of it, uh, you note uh, where you caught it and what county you're in, and you send it in. And uh, we have one of our biologists in the headquarters office that, that keeps a running tally of everybody's native slam until they're complete. Um, so like I said, entry forms, any uh, fishing guide or endow.org. Um, if you go to under the fishing section on our website, um, you can find it there. Um, and there's a bunch of additional information on our website, again, about the native slam. Um, one quick note, our website will be undergoing a, a pretty big revision, but it should be, with our new website, it should actually be a whole lot easier to find in the future. Uh, rules and eligibility. So here's all the, uh, all the rules and all the legalese that goes with it. Um, so to qualify for the native slam, it must be taken legally from Nevada waters. Um, and like I said, a, a photo must be provided of the angler um, with a fish. Uh, we get a lot of selfies of, of people holding their, their fish at. Um, it's got to be where, uh, where the fish was caught. There's no time limit um, in order to complete the native slam. It, it's not a calendar year. It's, there's, it's not any time limit whatsoever. Um, but for each fish that you catch in the native slam um, must be submitted within 60 days of, of that fish being caught. So you can't start to start today and say, okay, I want to do my native slam. And oh, I, I caught a Bonneville cutthroat trout about four years ago in this water. Um, it's basically from, from this day forward when you start you decide you want to start your native slam. Uh, we don't require lengths and weights, unlike the, the trophy program. Um, just yourself at the water with a picture of the fish. Um, after all six uh, Nevada native species are caught, you'll get a uh, certificate. Um, and uh, along with the certificate, you'll receive a hat. And we're going to be, we're looking into a bunch of uh, additional 
um, recognition methods. Uh, we're going to get some new hats here pretty quick from what I've heard, as well as some pins or tokens. Um, basically, it's just, just a way to recognize those people who go out and catch every uh, species of trout that's native to Nevada. Um, if it's big enough, we encourage you to, to enter it in our trophy program as well. Um, and we reserve the right to accept, reject, disqualify any entry. Um, reason why this language is in there is uh, a lot of times we get, we get submissions for the native slam program and fish are misidentified. Um, uh, it's amazing how many people we catch a brook trout, uh, a, a non-colored up brook trout and think it's a bull trout. So um, we just have, like I said, our, one of our biologists checks all the photos um, and whatnot and then goes through them. So this comes, this comes to the, the, the time of the presentation, which is the overarching message that I want to convey and, and what our program is about. It, it's not about going out there and, and, and checking off fish on a list as quickly as possible. Um, the, what this program is designed for is, um, it, it's about the journey, not the destination. It, it's, it's not, um, okay, I need to check, check, check and get it done with. Um, this whole program is designed to encourage anglers to get out there uh, to see parts of Nevada that otherwise you probably wouldn't see because in order to, to complete the native slam, it's gonna take you to all different corners of the state and you're gonna see some really fantastic habitat and some fantastic country that lots of folks otherwise would never see. So it's, 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 a, it's all about um, the journey and not the destination and we encourage people um, to enjoy the whole process of, of going, doing their native slam. Here's uh, the uh, certificate that's awarded um, to those uh, recognized for catching each of Nevada's game fish. Um, it has all the dates and species caught, signed by our chief of fisheries and our, and our director. And the hat that we give out to everybody that competes, completes their native slam, um, like I said, we're going to be getting some new hats and some pins and some tokens. We're, excuse me, we're in talks right now with Trout Unlimited. Um, some of the other states give out a real pretty token that says Nevada native slam and it'll have, you know, one or, or additional species of fish on, on the token. So we're looking into some additional things as well. This slide might be a little uh, outdated, but as of just about a year ago, there had only been 16 individuals um, that, have, that have completed their, their native slam. Um, that's not for, for lack of trying. We have um, oh, the last time I looked, at least a, a few hundred people that are that are partway done with their native slam. Um, like I said, it's not easy to do, and and the hard part isn't catching the fish. Uh, if you go to the place where some of these native fish are, that's going to be the easiest part is catching fish. Um, but the difficult part in a lot of this is getting to where the fish are. Um, these these six species that we're going to talk about are are spread to every corner uh, throughout the entire state. Um, so now let's talk about uh, the, the fish that com comprise the native slam for Nevada. The first one, um, probably the one the, that everybody, the fish that is synonymous, native fish that is synonymous with Nevada, the state, state fish, fish, fish species is the Lahontan cutthroat trout. Uh, most people learn in school at an early age um, that back in the Pleistocene, most of Northern Nevada was covered by ancient Lake Lahontan and these fish were a remnant of that um, ancient Lake Lahontan. Um, so most of Northern Nevada is uh, native habitat for Lahontan cutthroat trout. So if you look at uh, this map that we have here, you can see all uh, historic native waters uh, that once had Lahontan cutthroat trout streams rivers and lakes. Um, all the, the blue lines are historically occupied stream where, where they once were and all the, the yellow that you see on the map is where uh, we currently have Lahontan cutthroat trout. So you can see a uh, pyramid here uh, in the Truckee River. Um, it's not quite updated because we no longer have uh, Lahontan cutthroat trout, but um, northern part of the state we've got a number of streams with, with Lahontan cutthroat trout. Um, and what I like to do is, is, is show folks uh, what these fish look like. I can sit here and talk all, all day about Lahontan cutthroat trout, but the pictures uh, do it a whole lot better. Um, like all or most cutthroat species, Lahontan cutthroat trout, generally they have a, a, a much darker sort of 
olive to dark gold uh, coloration, a lot of them do. And stream by stream, all species of, of cutthroat trout can vary widely. Um, but you'll see a lot of similarities as we go through some of these pictures of Lahant and cutthroat trout. Um, there's another one. Another thing that's really characteristic of all cutthroat species is, um, as opposed to rainbow trout, rainbow trout will have um, speckles or freckles, um, black dots, versus cutthroat trout will have big round dots. And a lot of those, that spotting pattern is concentrated more towards the rear end of the fish rather than the front end of the fish. Um, and some of these streams, uh, these, these are some, some cutthroat streams throughout Northern Nevada, just your, your prototypical lawn and cutthroat stream where you're gonna find these, find these fish. Um, once again, sort of that dark golden with the, with the red band in there. Um, you can see the red slash underneath the jaw here, which gives the cutthroat its name. Um, if you look under uh, the jaw on these fish, there's a super bright red crimson slash in here, which, which gives it its name cutthroat. Um, a lot of these stream resident fish will still have these um, up and down par marks on them, and they'll lose those as they get bigger. Um, once again, spotting towards towards the uh, the rear end of the fish. Um, once again, where are you going to find the hunt and cutthroat trout? This is generally some of the type of habitat. A lot of the the habitat that people driving through Nevada that say that Nevada looks so desolate and dreary. Um, you know, if if you take a four wheel drive and, and wander up some of these canyons, you're going to find these green strips of riparian um, and some of these streams that, that contain lot and cutthroat trout. Um, here's a good, good photo that shows that, uh, that cutthroat, that red crimson underneath the jaw. And more lot and cutthroat trout. Another lot and cutthroat trout. This gives you a really good indication of the spots big round spots that are that are situated posterior posteriorly or near the, the rear end of the fish rather than the front end of the fish. Um, a beautiful colored up lot and cutthroat trout. This was during the spawning period. Um, like most species when they spawn, like most trout species, uh, the males especially will get really um, vibrantly colored up. This is a male from up at uh, Marlet Lake, um, just up here by Lake Tahoe. Um, another cutthroat male from Marlette. Once again, you can see it's the spawning period, so they get this really, really crimson colored. Um, just beautiful fish. Um, and here's Marlette Lake. Marlette Lake sits uh, above 8,000 feet. It's actually um, quite a bit higher than Lake Tahoe. It requires about a, a five mile hike to get there. Um, and it's open late summer, early fall for catch and release fishing. It's an absolutely spectacular hike and a, and a beautiful place. Um, if you want to put forth a little effort to go catch your lot. And, and of course, what most people associate lot and cutthroat trout with is, is Pyramid Lake. Um, lot and cutthroat trout uh, once inhabited Pyramid Lake and ran up the Truckee River and, and spawned throughout the Truckee Meadows, dams, and uh, Agricultural practices <clears throat> and sedimentation and, and whatnot uh, led to their demise. The fish were extir extirpated. They were brought back in the 70s. Lot and cutthroat trout were put back in Pyramid Lake. Um, and just for the past 10 or 15 years, they've reintroduced the, the Pilot Peak strain of lot and cutthroat trout back into Pyramid Lake, um, which evidence shows was the original lake strain. And, and these fish get really big. Um, so largest cutthroat in the world are, are currently found in Pyramid Lake, and it's very, very popular place to, to go catch your lot and cutthroat trout. So the top five uh, LCT waters in the state. Um, we'll go through this. Um, and when I say the top five waters for, for lot and cutthroat trout, what I mean is I went through um, all of our native slam uh, participants and, and entries and, and looked at where, where people are catching um, the top five, five waters where people have submitted their, their cutthroat slam. So, um, no surprise, the number one water for La and cutthroat trout is Pyramid, Pyramid Lake, um, followed by Gantz Creek up in Elko Candy. Um, interestingly enough, uh, number three is Carpenter Canyon. Um, where's Carpenter Canyon? Carpenter Canyon's about uh, 45 minutes outside of Las Vegas, up on Mount Charleston. Um, they're not native there. 
And I should say this uh, before I go any further is some states for their native native fish land program require you to catch a fish, um, a native fish, but it has to be in a native water. We don't require that in Nevada. As long as it's a native fish, it doesn't matter where it lives. Um, we have a Lahontan cutthroat trout population up in Carpenter Canyon, up on Mar Mount Charleston. They're not native. They were originally put there years and years, decades ago, uh, and they've persisted. Um, so, so folks living in Clark County um, don't have to make the drive to Pyramid Lake or Elko County in order to uh, go catch a Lahontan cutthroat trout. There's, there's some just outside of town. Um, after Carpenter Canyon comes Verdi Pond. Um, Verdi Ponds are the ponds at Crystal Peak Park out in, in Verdi, just to the west of Reno. Um, and the other, other ones are Smith Lake and Hidden Lakes, which are some of our high mountain lakes in the Ruby Mountains. Moving on to our next species, Bonneville Cutthroat Trout. Uh, like we were talking about, uh, most people know that 10,000 years ago, most of Nevada was covered by Lake Lahontan. Similarly, during that same time period, most of Utah was covered by Lake Bonneville. Um, and the remnants of Lake Lahontan, which are Pyramid Lake and Walker Lake, similarly, the remnants of the current today remnants of, of ancient Lake Bonneville are the Great Salt Lake and Utah Lake, um, right there out of, outside of Salt Lake City. Um, similarly, as the, as the lakes uh, desiccated over years and years and years, fish were relegated to high mountain streams. Um, so if Bonneville cutthroat trout is native to Utah, then how is it native to Nevada? You can see here um, in our map, this is uh, a representation of where ancient Lake Bonneville used to cover. And if you look, it came um, right along the eastern portion of, of Nevada in our native range. You can see, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor on your screen or not. Um, if you can, uh, it's on Ely right now. Um, if you go uh, to the east of Ely, you've got the Snake Mountain Range, and that east side of the Snake Mountains is all native range for Bonneville cutthroat trout. And the Department of Wildlife, in cooperation with BLM and the Forest Service and the Fish and Wildlife Service, over the course of the past oh, 25 years or so, have restored Bonneville cutthroat trout to every stream but two that, uh, that are native in, in the Snake Range, um, which includes a, a a whole number of number of streams. It's really been a success story to to restore Bonneville cutthroat trout in Nevada to where they once were. Um, here's a typical Bonneville cutthroat stream. This is uh, Hendry's Creek. Um, like most most streams in Nevada, um, fed heavily by by snowpack and springtime runoff. Um, we looked at some Lahontan cutthroat trout and, and by and large, they were mostly that sort of darker golden. Bonnevilles are a whole lot lighter in color, generally speaking. They'll have these pink um, sort of splashes across the lateral line. Once again, um, not freckles, but round dots, spotting pattern and situated towards the rear of the fish. Um, here's a, a colored up Bonneville cutthroat trout. Uh, this was out of Dead Man Creek, a uh, really nice fish, and, and you can tell that it was during the spawn just based on how colored up that male is. Um, once again, you can see the slashes underneath its jaw there. Um, another one, another Bonneville cutthroat, cutthroat trout. You can see it's, it's a much more light golden um, color uh, as opposed to the Lawton cutthroat trout. Again, light, light gold. Um, almost a, a yellowish tint with the, the red slashes along the lateral line. Um, and, and like I'm gonna be saying about two dozen times during this presentation, um, what the Native Slam is here for is to get people out to explore the back corners of Nevada. Um, this, is a, this is a cutthroat stream, a Bonneville cutthroat stream over in White Pine County, um, hiking in to go get your fish. This is, this is some of the views that you're awarded with. Um, so like we said, it's not about the destination. It's, a, it's about the journey, getting out um, and exploring places that you otherwise would have no reason to go to. Um, another Bonneville cutthroat trout. This was uh, from Hendry's Creek. Um, some of the uh, country where Bonneville cutthroat trout live um, are also home to bristlecone pines. These are some bristlecone pines. And if, you, if I were to turn around, uh, from where this picture is taking directly behind me and down the canyon is, is a Bonneville cutthroat stream. 
Um, we've got a number of groves of bristlecone pine uh, in the Snake Range over there, Mount Wheeler in the Great Basin National Park and Mount Moriah Wilderness Area. Um, they're really neat, the oldest living thing on, on planet Earth are bristlecone pines. Um, once again, um, this is Mount Moriah over there in White Pine County. Um, just some beautiful, beautiful country. Um, and this is uh, from Mount, Maria, Mount Moriah, looking directly to the south, looking at uh, Mount Wheeler, and that all is encompasses, this all encompasses Great Basin National Park, um, which has got a number of Bonneville Cutboat streams. So our top five waters, um, these are all over in White Pine County, Hendry's Creek, uh, Smith Creek, Goshoot Creek, which is uh, not native range, it's uh, north of Ely in the Cherry Creek Range, uh, Mill Creek, which is in the National Park, and Big Wash. Um, so those are our top five Bonneville cutthroat. Next one, probably one of the most difficult out of the, the six fish that encompass Nevada's native slam, one of the most difficult one uh, to get and, and is usually the last one for people to check off their list is the Yellowstone cutthroat trout. Um, why is it so hard to, to get? It's not because they're hard to catch, they're actually really easy to catch. Um, it's hard to get there and I'll, you'll see here in just a second exactly why. So this, um, similar to the Bonneville map that we showed, the orange represents all native range for uh, Yellowstone cutthroat trout. So you can see up here in Southern Montana, you've got Yellowstone National Park here, a huge chunk of Wyoming, Idaho. And if you look way down here in this extreme bottom corner, you can see just a little bit of orange uh, barely dips down into Nevada. Um, we have actually one single drainage in Nevada that is native Yellowstone cutthroat trout country. Um, which encompasses two creeks. So we do, they are native to Nevada because we have one drainage uh, where they do live. Um, so like I said, the hardest part is just getting up there to the extreme, extreme northeast corner of the state. It requires a lot of off-road driving, a lot of dirt, dirt roads just to get there. Um, but once you get there, this is what you're re rewarded with is some, some beautiful Yellowstone cutthroats. Um, similar spotting pattern. Um, as the other species of cutthroats, and they're generally um, a lot darker than, than the bonnevilles, which we just looked at. Um, as, you, as we go through this, you'll see that a lot of these streams look like if anybody spend a lot of uh, time in the back backwoods of Nevada, these high, high mountain streams um, seem to all look alike. Um, really, really dense vegetation, real small streams, generally some, some high gradients, not a lot of room for, for some extensive casting in most of these. A lot of them is, is just sort of dipping your, your lure, your bait, or your fly uh, in a pool because it's, it's just so densely vegetated. Um, once again, a lot darker, but still that golden, still the spotting pattern towards the rear, red splashes under the jaw. Um, some of the views that you're awarded when you go, go out to the back, back corners of Nevada looking for some of these fish. Um, just some spectacular views um, of some, some gorgeous country. Um, so let's talk about the top five Yellowstone cutthroat trout waters. There they are, Goose Creek and Little Goose Creek, the only two streams in Nevada where we have Yellowstone cutthroat trout. Um, for those that wish to go after their Yellowstone cutthroat trout for their Nevada native slam, um, one word of warning, not warning, um, but both Goose Creek and Little Goose Creek are on private property. So it does require landowner permission. Um, the landowner up there uh, thus far and in the past has been really accommodating to people wanting to go there to catch their, their Yellowstone cutthroat trout. Um, but please go ask permission with the landowner um, before you go fishing there, um, prevent any, any trespass issues. Uh, they've been really good in the past in, in letting people, but we just ask, ask that folks, folks, please ask permission. Um, another difficult one um, to get that, that's up there in that same corner of the state as Yellowstone cutthroat trout is bull trout. Um, a lot of folks that live in Nevada have never heard of a bull trout, but they are a species of trout native to Nevada. 
Um, and similar to the Yellowstone cutthroat trout, you can see um, this is the native range of bull trout. Bull trout are really, really unique when it comes to the trout world and that re they require very cold, um, extremely cold water. Um, you can see their, their northern part of the range goes up in the Yukon Territory and the Northwest Territories in Northern Canada. They're prolific throughout British Columbia and much of Alberta, um, down through Seattle and Washington. Um, and similar to the Yellowstones, you can see the extreme, very southern tip of their range just barely dips into Nevada. Um, and that's where we have bull trout, and that's where they are native to Nevada. So if, if you're looking uh, on the map, you can see this extreme southern tip to where bull trout are native, and just to the east of that is where the Yellowstones are. So um, once again, um, not hard to, to catch them when you find them, but the, the difficult part is getting there. Um, and we'll talk about where they live. This is uh, um, this is the extent of our bull trout habitat in Nevada. You can see the Idaho Nevada border. Um, everything on the left hand side. You've got the west fork of the Jarbage River and the east fork of the Jarbage River. Um, the main main fork of the Jarbage River is is up in Idaho, but in Nevada we've got the west fork and the east fork and all the tributary streams uh, to those. And that's that's the extent of bull trout in Nevada. Um, so how do you get there? They're up in the uh, Jarbage, um, and if for anybody that's been to the Jarbage Wilderness Area and, and Jarbage, the town of Jarbage itself, it's, it's not easy to get to at all. Um, when the roads are passable in, in the summertime, you can get up there, um, up through Mountain City, and you can go through Charleston and up over Coon Creek Summit and drop in there. Um, otherwise, you got to go uh, north up out of jackpot and you can come around through Idaho through the north through the north. Um, either way, it's a journey. It takes a while to get there. It takes a long while. It takes some spare tires and some water. Um, but with that being said, you're going to be rewarded with some of the most beautiful country that you're ever going to see in Nevada. Um, this is some of the some of the habitat where where bull trout live. It, it looks um, more like Glacier National Park than it does uh, what most people would associate with typical Nevada. Bull trout, um, they're not a, a true trout, they're a, a, a char. Um, so we've, we've been through the three cutthroat species. Um, now we're moving on to, um, they're all considered trout species, which are all in the salmonid family. Um, and trot, char, um, bull trout, brook trout are, are considered trout. They're just a, a different uh, genus. Than, than cutthroats. So um, light spots on a, on a darker background versus the cutthroats were dark spots on a lighter background. Um, bull trout, uh, like I said, they evolved in extremely cold water. They're an extremely predatory piscivorous fish. Uh, in bigger systems, bull trout can get giant and they're extremely predatory. They eat other fish, they're meat eaters. Um, once again, this is this is where bull trout live. It's uh, takes some 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 effort and it takes some miles on some boots to to get to the bull trout. Um, but what you're rewarded with is is pretty spectacular views. Um, this is in bull trout country. A lot of a lot of folks don't realize that Nevada now has uh, an established moose population. Moose have been moving down from Idaho in the past ten or fifteen years. Um, some young bulls uh, showed up, uh, such as this guy here, um, followed by some, some cows. And now we have an established population of, uh, last I heard, about 50 or 60 that are permanent residents in Nevada. And they're up there in this garbage country. Um, it used to be a novelty and used to be something special. If you saw moose, um, they're becoming a lot more common. And uh, if you're up there in that garbage country looking for a bull trout, uh, you're most likely going to see a moose, a Nevada moose. So our top five bull trout waters. Um, like I said, these are all, um, you can see the West Fork and the East Fork of the Jarbridge River itself, and Pine Creek and Jack Creek are tributaries to, to these those two main stems. So it's all that, just that one big drainage that I showed here just a couple minutes ago. Our next species uh, is, 
Interior red band trout. What's that? Once again, this is a species that not a lot of people are familiar with. Um, what is a red band trout? A red band trout is genetically identical to a rainbow trout. Um, the big difference is we, we stock rainbow trout everywhere throughout the state of Nevada. Um, those fish aren't native. Um, those fish were native to um, Northern California. That's where a lot of our hatchery fish originated um, and have been domesticated and propagated over, over the, the, the past century. But there are um, original rainbow trout, which are, which are referred to as red band trout that are native to Nevada. So you can see native range of red band trout. We've got the green, which, we're, which are coastal red band trout. Um, we've got some Sacramento, Kern, McLeod River red bands. Um, and then the orange is uh, Columbia River red band trout. So a lot of that similar country where, that we were just looking at with bull trout. In fact, in a lot of that Jarbage River, East Fork and West Fork country, um, if you're gonna go there, uh, those, those waters are full of red bands um, along with the bull trout. Um, most people complain about catching about 10 red bands to every bull trout that they catch. Um, a lot more red bands than bull trout. So if, if you go up into that country, you can knock out two species of your native slam. So um, once again, like I was talking about earlier, more of a, a freckled rather than a, than a round black dot, uh, a freckle pattern like a rainbow trout. Um, and there's, there's no real rhyme or reason on the spotting pattern. It's, it's sort of freckles um, all over the body. Uh, red bands, uh, another characteristic are these par marks, which you know most rainbow trout lose really uh, quickly after their first year in a hatchery. Uh, red band trouts will keep these par marks um, throughout most of their life, uh, which makes them beautiful. Just um, once again, this is some of the country um, that you'll drive through or experience if you're if you're chasing after these critters. There's another example of those par marks. You can see it looks uh, somewhat like a rainbow trap, but not as washed out. Um, really vibrant colors that that red reddish pink rainbow stripe down the lateral line and those par marks. Um, just beautiful fish. There's another example of uh, a red band uh, with the par marks on it. Um, once again, uh, most of these streams where you're going to catch these fish are, uh, you could jump across most of them in many places. So our top five red band waters. Um, look at that, you got the West Fork and the East Fork of the Jarbage River, um, which were in the top five for bull trout as well. So like I said, go up to that neck of the woods, you can knock out two species in the same drainage. Um, Pine Creek, Jack Creek, and Bruno River, those are, these are all up in uh, that same Northern Elko, Elko County country. And the last one um, that we're gonna talk about that most people don't even realize is a trout species, but it is a salmonid, is the mountain whitefish. Um, whitefish gets overlooked a lot. You can see um, here's the native range of, of mountain whitefish. They're concentrated uh, quite heavily up in northwest part of, of the U.S. and down through through Utah. Uh, we've got a number of whitefish up there in that uh, Bruno Oahe uh, Jarbage uh, country that we were just talking about. Um, but in addition to that, you look over here in the western part of Nevada. And we've got uh, quite a bit of whitefish as well. Um, we'll talk about that on where we can find them here in just, just a minute. Uh, whitefish look very, very different than, than most other species of trout. Um, no real spotting pattern. They've got a, a much bigger scale, um, a skinnier tail, um, a more deeply, deeply forked tail, and, and a much smaller mouth. They don't have the, the, the big mouth that that most people associate with trout species. Um, here's one place where you can find whitefish in Nevada is right in, uh, right in the Truckee Meadows uh, in Reno. Um, the Truckee River, a uh, whole length of the Truckee River is, is home to whitefish all the way up to Lake Tahoe. Um, so for those folks that, living in, that are living in Western Nevada, um, a real easy species to, to check off the list. 
once again, bigger scales, no spotting, um, real silvery, silver to, to yellowish color. And you can see that, that really deep forked tail when compared to other, other trout species and the really small mouth. Um, once again, um, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but it's about not about the destination, it's about the journey. Um, getting out to the back countries of Nevada. Here's a really good picture of a white fish. Uh, you can see that yellowish, yellowish to golden hue that they have, the really small mouth. Um, and let's talk about the top five waters. Uh, so down in the East Fork of the Walker River, for those folks that are familiar with the, um, the East Fork of the Walker, down, oh, say the Elbow, Rosashi's, Ranch, that country, lots and lots of whitefish down there. Um, the Bruno River, uh, the Truckee River, like we were just talking about, and Salmon Falls Creek, which is um, just up south of, of Jackpot. Um, so lots of different choices um, throughout the state. You can go up into sort of northern and northeastern Elko County um, or western Nevada in the Truckee and the Walker system to get your whitefish. Um, like I just said, and like I've been saying all night long, uh, we're hoping for, for people that are, that are willing to, to give it a try that the, the Nevada native fish slam is about the journey and not the destination. It's about getting out with family and friends um, and enjoying some of the, the beautiful country that Nevada has to offer. And with that, I believe, um, that we are about done. And that's all I have. So I am uh, more than happy to sit here however long it takes and answer any questions that anybody might have. We'll go ahead and start typing in um, some questions into the Q&A. Or the chat get them going. I shared the fishing guide in the chat for everybody too. Yeah, it was a great presentation, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Wanda, can you type it in? All right. Can you see the Q and A, Chris? Uh. Are there guides to get you to some of these spots? Um, there are. As a matter of fact, just um, this past year for the first time, we used to, to publish um, Nevada fishing guides um, or angler information guides, one for the Eastern region, one for the Western region, one for the Southern region, um, which were guides that, that showed you all the streams that had fish in Nevada and, and what species they had in them. Um, those angler guides were incorporated into um, our fishing regulations. So any, any current copy of our, our fishing regulations guide is gonna have that in there. They've got maps of each region and all the waters in there and, uh, and all the species in there. So if you go down to the, the species code on, on each particular page and, and you can find all, all six of those species, um, Bonneville cutthroat trout, Lahontan, Yellowstone, bull trout, red band, and whitefish. So yeah, it's in our in our current current fishing guides. Best time of the year to fish for mountain whitefish on the East Walker. In my experience, you're looking at it right now. This is it. Um, the the East Walker is. Uh, is fantastic and the Truckee and the East Walker is really special this time of year when the leaves are turning, um, not only for its beauty, but the, the browns down there are, are getting reared up, getting ready to spawn. Um, and the whitefish as well are, are really active. Um, we usually survey the walker this time of year and um, it'd be brought, my recommendation, October, November is, is the best time for, for fishing the, the East Walker. And I would go, if you're after a whitefish, I would go uh, to the elbow. You bet, Robert? Sorry, that might be me. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, Michael might have also been wondering about like an actual 
person guide, like a personal guide? Um, I know in the western part of Nevada, there's uh, a number of guides. A lot of them are associated with the Truckee River and Pyramid Lake. Um, um, but uh, yeah, there's a, there are a number of licensed guides that guide on the Truckee River, Doug Ouellette, Casey Anderson, um, or some, some people that come to mind. Um, you could Google Truckee River guides, and but a lot of, a lot of folks that uh, I'm familiar with in the western part of the state they guide um, particularly the Truckee River, the Walker River, and Pyramid Lake, and they'd, they'd have a really good, really good idea where to catch some of these these native fish. Um, they could get you a lot and cut their trout of whitefish um, pretty easily. Are these fish rare? Um, that's a great question, and, it, and a lot of it depends on how you define rare. Um, a lot of these fish are rare in Nevada. Um, bull trout are only in, in the East Fork and the West Fork drainage up there in, in Northern Elko County. Um, red, band, red band trout are a lot more, you know, globally they're not rare in, you know, throughout their native range. If you look at their native range as a whole, they're not rare. Um, but some of them in Nevada, um, they are rare. Like bull trout are, are very rare in Nevada itself, but throughout their native range, throughout um, Oregon, Washington, Montana, and up through a huge portion of Canada, they're, they're not rare at all. Um, some of the other species uh, on the native slam list, um, particularly the and cutthroat trout, is a threatened species under the Endangered Species Act. Um, it's listed as uh, threatened and has been since 1975 um, because we've lost so many populations and so much habitat for Lahontan and cutthroat trout. Um, in comparison to to where they once lived, um, so it, it's it's rare um, in in a way as as in comparison to to where it once lived. Um, so so yeah, the the lawn and cutthroat trout, relatively speaking, is rare. Um, Bonneville, um, not so much. Um, Yellowstone is rare in Nevada, but across their native range not rare at all. Uh, up through Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, there's there's Yellowstone cutthroats everywhere. Which is the most common native fish out of these six? Um, once again, um, it depends on what we're talking about, common where. The most common in Nevada, I would have to say, is uh, absolutely Lahontan cutthroat trout. We have more Lahontan cutthroat trout than probably most of everything else uh, combined. Um, but the most common globally, the most common, I would probably have to say is uh, probably whitefish or bull trout um, because throughout their native range, they're, they're pretty common. Um, but the most common in Nevada definitely is Lahontan and cutthroat trout followed by probably mountain whitefish, then uh, red band, then Bonneville cutthroat trout and Yellowstone cutthroat. Chris Crookshanks will also be tomorrow helping us with hatcheries and conservation. So we will talk about some of these waters that are disappearing uh, over time or depending on the year, just because of dry weather. Um, and then the hatcheries, he's gonna be our helper with that too. Um, so that's tomorrow afternoon at 4.30. Um, so we still have three more days of all this awesome education with our fisheries. And you can sign up on Facebook or through our website under our classes. Um, and then as you leave, there is a survey. So if you can let us know how you liked everything, if there's anything that we could improve on. Um, and just, uh, it just takes a couple minutes and um, it's good feedback for all of us. And Huge thanks to Chris Crookshanks and our audience tonight. So this is awesome. This is our first year running fish camp. Um, may change it to the spring. We'll see how this all goes and keep it going though and change up some classes depending on your guys' survey answers. 